That which accomplishes mukti. Mukti, how to translate it? You can say liberation or you can even say freedom. Freedom sounds a bit immediate. Where the liberation sounds mediate. You see, generally people assume that they don't need mukti, there is no urgency for that. So they say Trivarga is more important than Moksha now. Moksha is not so not very important. We can choose Trivarga. Trivarga is Dharma Artha Kama. Moksha comes later. Three plus one, it is four Purusharthas. So like that they will be talking. So all words, you know. So you see, life is life has a particular dynamic. And uh, instead of examining life and try to understand, we get caught in some phrases and expressions. In this, uh, there is some connection, but uh, somehow the words become more important. Ideas and expressions become more, more important. So the life's problems remain a begging for a solution. You see, the word mukti or moksha, one and the same, muchti. So chokkuhu mukti. Much a. Then samsa will come moksha, guna and moksha. Puganta laghupatha guna and moksha. Same. So this idea of mukti or moksha, the way it is presented, it sounds very esoteric very esoteric and uh, something that will happen later. Kind of uh, the cycle of birth and death is there and so we have to become free from the cycle of birth and death. Now is it such an urgent thing that the cycle of birth and death, <laughs> the cycle of birth and death uh, is okay bhai, we understand, but it is highly esoteric. Whereas, what about the life in the, in the immediate? Generally, we prepare ourselves to understand only one small corner of life. That is how we prepare ourselves. Like, for example, we go to school, college, etc., pass certain examinations, and acquire a skill or two, find a job, get married. Some unfortunate people get married even before getting the job. <laughs> <laughs> and then the in-laws and the wife should be looking at him, making him feel very unhappy and uh, afraid and anxious. And get married, have children, and then become more and more like machines. Look at life. So we remain fearful, anxious, frightened of life. Religion doesn't serve any purpose. I mean, in fact, religion adds to our fears and worries. And then we grow older. Most of us, as we grow older, become frightened. That is how the life goes on. We are afraid of living anxious, you know, a low level anxiety is always there. We are caught in the net of time. And then we are afraid of death. When we are afraid of living, we should welcome death. No, we are afraid of death also. So most of us have fear in one form or the other. We have fear. And add spiritual anxiety to it. 
whether I will get moksha or not. That kind of anxiety. And then uh, there are descriptions of hell. There are such a frightening descriptions are there. And uh, so purgatory descriptions in Christian mythology or Christian theology. And uh, the hell descriptions are uh, no less frightening. Very frightening descriptions. And uh, so we need freedom from fear, from anxiety. When? Now. No, no, we need freedom from the cycle of birth and death. Okay, that also we need. Eh? But we need freedom from fear and anxiety now. Well, whatever little life is left, we need to live uh, quietly and peacefully, you know. So, I tell you, the fear has another issue. When you are afraid, your capacity to think is compromised. Because you cannot think freely. Because fear takes away freedom. Freedom even to think. You cannot even think freely. You cannot. So, in the name of religion, in the name of tradition, another word, religion sounds more frightening than tradition, but the tradition the word also contributes. You should not think. You should follow. Like that. And so, without fear, only you can think. You can think freely only when you are not afraid. When you think freely, you are, you are free enough to think, then you begin to discover what is real. You have to discover what is real. You see, generally we are waiting to be told to. In fact, in one class I was hacking on this mark, this world only. We are waiting to be told to. So, you see, if you don't mind, when you are waiting to be told to, are you subject or object? Object. And therefore psychologically dead. When you are waiting to, people should understand. They are all waiting to be told to. They don't know, they don't, they are psychologically dead. They are, they are not trying to think. They are waiting to be told to. And also, they are afraid of thinking. Because in thinking, you are, you are your own master. You have to show way to yourself. You are, uh, you are guiding your own uh, path and that puts, that, that uh, takes away the security of psychological dependence on the other. Therefore, so what we need is freedom, mukti sadhaka. We need freedom. Now, what is freedom? Not just to do whatever you like. That is not the freedom I am talking about. That you do anyway. <laughs> Even now you do it all the time. So that is not the freedom we are talking about. So the, you need the freedom to understand the whole process of living. You need the, because unless you are free from fear, you cannot think. And unless you think, think you jump, you discover. The process of, whole process of living, you have to discover. Nobody can give you the truth on a platter. Truth or discovery is not a piece of property to be inherited or to be given. You have to discover itself it in yourself. There is another uh, thing you have to add. You have to discover and that too in yourself. Therefore, so you see, you have to discover, please note, you have to discover, not imitate. 
Imitation is not uh, what we need to do. That is what we do. You imitate. You tell me one aspect of your life in which you are not imitating? One, one thing uh, which you can call original, you tell me? No surprise that discovery doesn't happen to us. Therefore, uh, so, and also, if you don't mind, uh, I have already entered into it, therefore let me take it to a logical conclusion. Did anybody tell you to find out what God is? No. 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 Nobody tells you to find out what God is. This is a crazy world, I tell you. He, he, he should tell you that you find out what God is. That is what the Guru should tell you. No Guru tells that. The Guru has the God in his pocket already. <laughs> and he will give it to you, and you imitate. So that is not God. That is a concept, or I believe it is. Therefore, you have to find out what God is. That, that is the true religion. You have to find out what God is. Another name for truth, you have to find out what is the truth. You have to find out what is the real satyam jnana. What you call God is satyam, and that you have to find out. You have to know. So, Guru is like a pointing finger, and there is the Zen master saying that those who worship the pointing finger miss the moon. <laughs> so. Therefore, uh, the world is completely confused and, uh, no, uh, because nobody tells you to discover the God. Nobody says, I would love to discover God. Nobody says that. So, highly, utterly confused world it is. And also in this world everyone is against somebody. Everyone is against somebody. So, Everyone is struggling to arrive at a safe place. Everyone. The religionist is not different. The Vedantin is not different. Everyone is struggling to arrive at a safe place. So, the world is torn by conflicting beliefs and then by class distinctions and caste distinctions, by every form of ignorance, and uh, cruelty, they, these are all there. So, therefore, you need freedom from all this. Freedom primarily from fear and anxiety, so that you can think freely and discover the truth yourself. That is the mukti. So, it is very urgent very essential for the life and very immediate. And uh, the, the world is very aptly described by the Shruti as, in a very general way it is said, avidyaya mantare vartamana. There is no effort to exempt anybody. world is like that. So, world is pervaded by Ignorance, stupidity, and madness, craziness. That is how the world. Everybody is against everybody, somebody else, and everybody is struggling to reach a safe place. Psychologically dependent. This is a psychological dependence upon another person. Maybe spouse, maybe channel, maybe gurus. It is a huge burden and we need freedom from that. Most of all, we need freedom to think and to discover the truth. We need freedom. And in that discovery, there is emancipation. Therefore, that mukti will come to you 
if you understand the field of karma, the entire process of life you have to understand, not in isolation. And for understanding you need to think. To think you need freedom, freedom from fear and anxiety. All that is possible to attain, no one hears. Mukti sadhaka. Therefore what I have attempted is, I take out the esoteric aspect of the mukti and bring it into the immediacy of life and suggest that you have to examine the life more comprehensively to understand it, thereby become free from the anxiety, the fear, the insecurity and uh, the ignorance, etc. You need that immediately. Mukti sadhaka. So how to accomplish that? So examine the field of life. Life, life is work. There is no life without work. So field of work you examine. So nechaya karta. Karta, the field of work. In that we have already given up nishiddha karmas. There is no point in discussing about them. Nishiddha karmas utterly meaningless karmas, like uh, uh, four or five young people are walking and they found a small plant and uh, pulled out the branch and uh, tore, tore off the leaves and made it into pieces and threw there and stamped upon it and went away. What, what kind of action it is? <laughs> so, we are not talking of such actions, right? So we are talking of enjoying and purposeful actions. So that that is Nishiddha Karmas we are not talking about. But legal actions, legitimate actions, yet inspired by fear and fear and uh, desire, desire and fear. That kind of actions. So what we call Kamya Karmas. <coughs> Kamya Karmas are of two kinds. Shanti Karmas Poshtika karmas. Poshtika karmas means those which will bring pushti to you. Means uh, you, you want to become rich. Already you are rich, you want to become richer. Uh, already uh, you, you are married, you want to have children. You are not married, then you want to get married. You are married one time, you want to get married a second time. <laughs> like that. Once I came across a person who is doing a karma, some homa and some puja he is doing. Okay, namaskar and uh, you, you bless and move on. Some grahastha, must be a grahastha doing some karma, doing a road. Why he is not sitting by the side? But doing some karma, we don't know whether he is a brahmacharya or a grahastha, looks like a medium, middle age, medium, I mean middle age person. And uh, so, but then later uh, the, the priest were uh, in uh, some discussion told me, he is doing karma to get a quick divorce. <laughs> the divorce is hanging fire for quite a long time. Now he wants to become free. Why? Because another fiancé gave him an ultimatum. Come on, man, how long should I wait? <laughs> Therefore, uh, that the process has to be hastened, and uh, but the planets are misbehaving, and the plane is cheap. Therefore, he has to. What a life it is. This is called Shanti Karma. How to call it? Should I call it Shanti Karma or Pushti Karma? I don't know. I don't know how to categorize that. So, somebody else is uh, 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 worshipping. Gods and goddesses to get married. Many of them are like that. Many of them. Parents are uh, doing uh, pujas because uh, nowadays the earlier daughters were not getting married. Nowadays the sons are not getting married. <laughs> so somebody asked me, my daughter is not getting married, you give some, some upaya, you can. Then I, in Bhagavatam, you know, Rikmani is a love letter is there. <laughs> really? <laughs> Rukmini wrote a love letter of seven verses to Lord Vishwakshya. <laughs> Bhuvana Sundara, like that it is. Very beautiful. I, I have taught all this for some time. 
So I told him, you take these seven verses and then chant for some time. And the Bhagavad will bless you and you get married. And your daughter gets married. Now some, that was uh, some twenty, twenty years back. Recently somebody asked me, sir, my son is not getting married. Now I was struggling. Which love, which one should I give? Which mantra should I give? Because the literature has no mantra for sun getting married. There is no mantra. If you have got mantras only for daughter getting married. The literature is like that. So I was at a loss. Therefore, these are the karmas. Shanti karma, pushti karmas. You want something to happen, something to gain. Then shanti karmas. Entirely based on fear. The, this this priest craft it runs a riot when it comes to Shanti Karmas. You see, I went to a home for Meksha and uh, their uh, daughter in law was pregnant. Seven months or six, seven months. Ah, it is visible. So Earlier, one priest told her that you have Kuja Dosha. Kuja is one of the planets. Mangal. It's an English name, but I Mars. Okay, thank you. Because I don't know. I don't know. For me, there are only eight planets. I don't uh, know about nine planets. Because uh, in the recent astronomical convention in Switzerland, Zurich, they have dropped Pluto from the planet's list. It is not going around the sun. I only have eight planets. That is my knowledge. It is going around the sun, Swamiji. Mm, it is also going around another planet. Ah, yes. Therefore, it, 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 it defies the definition of a planet. Therefore, I, I recognize only eight planets. For me, there are no nine planets. So now how, uh, how my knowledge will fit into what is going on in the name of religion? So, and uh, they were afraid. She is afraid. The parents are afraid. The illness are afraid. It's a precious pregnancy. The first pregnancy. Everybody is afraid. Then I asked her, did he suggest any karma? Yes. What is the cost of that karma? One lakh rupees. <laughs> They are struggling, they are hesitating. Um, take a loan and do that karma. Now, who am I to stop them? But they asked me, what is your opinion? My opinion, I will tell you, you will not follow. Why should I tell you? I am not a, a fall guy that is easy to fall into this kind of a trap. They won't follow. They are driven by fear. They won't follow, they don't think. They have lost the capacity to think because of fear. Fear makes a human being into a slave. So my telling uh, doesn't uh, make any sense. And I don't want to put them into some kind of a uh, confusion. Then uh, the lady, the, the mother-in-law came. She said, I am listening to your classes for some time now. And uh, I know more than others, I can guide them. You advise me. I said, uh, drop this idea of this Kujadosha and all that. It is all fiction. fiction. There is no Kujadosha. It is wrong, wrong, wrong. And uh, you ask her to worship, to chant to Vashivaya, everything will be fine. And walked away. You see that? Therefore, so the two karmas, Shanti karma, Pushti karma. Karmas inspired by desire and fear. Where there is desire, the fear is uh, the cousin brother of the desire. <laughs> it will be there. Therefore, these two karmas, to give them up, lock, stock and bag. Nechaya krata. Then you are left with Nitya Nimittika. The field of karma becomes pruned. The ninety percent of the burden is gone. Now you are left with ten percent karmas. 
which are nitya nayavittika, which are called dutiful actions. And you perform them happily and uh, at a leisurely pace. There is no burden of the karma hanging on your head. So, this is how the life becomes free. And you have more time, more leisure, inner space, because now the desires and fears are off, means that inner space you have to examine the life. Nechaya Kratam. That is the immediate consequence of Nechaya Kratam. The field of activ- field of actions, especially the field of religious actions, becomes 10%. 90% is proved. That is the immediate advantage. Nityanayutika karmas are cheap. They, they don't require any input. You don't, you don't need to make any investment to offer arjyam to the rising sun. What is the cost of it? Nothing. Zero. Zero is the cost of uh, offering arjyam to the rising sun. It is good for health also. So Nitya Karma. Nitya Karma is what? Occasionally it comes and you put in some effort and be done. You finish that and feel good about it. So the life of action becomes very simple. And then uh, what happens as a, an immediate consequence, chitta shodhakam. The mind becomes purified. How how mind becomes purified? This notion that gone do this I said again I am saying, I am repetitive, giving a recap. So just go on doing some kamas like a tram car and your mind will be purified. It won't. Did it? Did it happen? It is written on the face that it did not happen. <laughs> because it is not expected to happen. That is not how Chitta Shodha comes. Chitta Shodha means when Nechaya Kratam, the Bhoktrutva, you have deliberately put it aside. And you have reason about the fear and anxiety created by your own mind out of superstition. That is what a what a improvement, what a purification it is. Nechayakratam. The moment you implement Nechayakratam, there is purification immediately. Chitta Shodhaka. Immediate purification of the mind. So Bhoktrutva, Asakti of four kinds. Asakti is the impurity of the mind. Asakti. Attachment of four kinds. Bhoktrutva Asakti. Also called Phala Asakti. Call it Phala Asakti. Phala Asakti. So Nechaya Karma. So Phala Asakti is done. You make an attempt, make a begin an attempt and it will become. Because uh, the asakti is an habit it is. It is a habit. Your habit you see, shall I give you a, a synonym for ignorance? Synonym for ignorance, habit. Mm-hmm. Once you have become habituated to something, means you are ignorant. You do by habit, that is ignorance. Therefore, you are habituated to feel attached. That is the attachment. Phala, 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 phala shrikati, phala shrikati. The prayer is this much, phala shrikati is this much, in some prayers. Uh, and uh, people are afraid, if we don't read phala shrikati, what will happen? <laughs> Whether we will get phala. Okay, so we may, get, may not get phala, but something bad may happen also. Like that the prayers are there. They put uh, the terror in the minds of devotees. The one who is not chanting anything, he is uh, roaming on the road, he is doing fine. <laughs> but the one who chants uh, this Sahasranama, he has to chant that Stotram also. Otherwise his entire chant of this Sahasranama is a waste. And over and above that, the universal mother will punish him. Look at that. People uh, uh, became like this. So dumb, I tell you. Uh, and uh, uh, the monstrosity of ignorance, it is very frightening. So, when you pray, how can you be punished for praying? 
That cannot happen. But that is how the fear is introduced. Anyway, so coming to the point, philosophy, that attachment to the phala. Ishtapratya anishtapariharya. Attachment to ishtapratya. Attachment to anishtapariharya is gone. Ma phaleshu kadachana. What a vision it is. The entire Mimamsa system was put upside down. Nechaya kartam. Phala sakti is gone. Karma sakti is gone. Karma sakti will go away. Karma sakti is there. We are like machines. We have become like machines. Either we should be sleeping or we should be working. There is no other alternative. Like machines, you know. Some of these machines are like the aeroplane. Aeroplane is a machine, you know. As long as it is on the ground, it accumulates losses. To become profitable, it should be in the sky flying. Therefore, its stay on the ground is kept minimal. And they put multiple systems in place so that it stays on the ground minimal time. Like some of these big, big aeroplanes are there which carry 400 to 500 people. So it comes from Frankfurt and lands on Miami and uh, it was making profit while crossing the oceans. But the moment it landed in Miami, it started accumulating losses. And therefore it should stand on the ground minimum period. They call it turnaround period. Turnaround period. It should be one hour one hour or two hours or three hours, it depends. If it is three hours, we are making loss. Can you make it two and a half hours so that the losses can come now? Our life has become like that. We have become like machines. <coughs> Either we should be sleeping or working. This is called karma sakti. Suppose there is no work to do. Now you are at a loss. What to do? There is jitavi. Jittery. Hey, why? What happened to you? I don't know what to do now. <laughs> no, no, just be. What do you mean by just be? What, what is that? <laughs> Shall I tell you one thing? People are there. People do not know that being and doing are separate. They do not know. They are, they are not the same. People are confused that doing is being, being is doing. They are confused about that. They don't know the, anything called nishtha. They only know karma niyata. They are attached to karma. There is a Telugu proverb which highlights this attitude of the human mind. There was a barber, I told many a time. There was a barber. Now he was shaving people one after the other, but now it is still lunch time is a one hour away and there are no customers. So what should we do now? Very <laughs> <laughs> difficult situation it is. No customers and the same lunch time is one hour. What should I do now? <laughs> so he caught hold of a cat <laughs> and he was, uh, he, he was uh, applying his skills upon it. When I, when I was seizing processes somewhere, uh, so, between one class and another class, there is uh, some gap. And in that gap, they can sit quietly, you know. They don't. I told them, sit quietly. Just be. They start something. They start reading some verse. And uh, that verse doesn't fit into the syntax, etc. <laughs> The saranamas and the pronouns and the nouns and pronouns do not correspond properly. Tasmai namaha. Tasmai must correspond to whatever said earlier, it doesn't correspond. <laughs> means some kind of a, a nomic verse. Means a verse that is floating around. Verse are verse, one verse are a group of verses. It is floating around. Somebody started. And so the original mischief maker was there, who started it. And then what they go on imitating. Go on imitating. Huh? 
So under says I am where from it is the it is the Skanda Purana. It is in Skanda Purana. You go and check whether it is in Skanda Purana, you don't find it there. <laughs> like that. Some some verses which are floating around and so you catch them and start reciting for a month, then it becomes a sacred uh, scripture. Just you recite one month, it becomes a scripture now. Now you have to recite it. Means the people cannot sit quietly. They cannot remain quiet. Just be. Just be. For God's sake, just be. No, no, we cannot be. We have to do. This is called karma sakti. This karma people go on talking. They cannot remain quiet, silent. It is also a karma. Either you go on talking or go on doing, do this or do that, something or the other. So, this is a big topic. One of these days I will talk about this. So, this karma sakti. When nechaya kratam, the karma sakti will come down. It will come down. So, you become, you know, already you are becoming free. Eh? Then there are two more asaktis left. Kartrutva asakti and akartrutva asakti. Kartrutva asakti means I am the doer. Akartrutva asakti means I am unhappy, I am frustrated, therefore I won't do it. This is akartrutva asakti. So, like uh, he was doing a job in the office, now he is uh, angry that he was not promoted, so I won't do, you won't do yourself. I won't do. This is Akartrutva Sakti. Like the housewife, she was unhappy for some reason, and she said, you cook your food, I won't cook today. <laughs> this is God. This is not Akarmanya Karmanya Karma. This is not that. Don't confuse with that. Okay? The person is a Karta, very fixed Karta. But due to frustration and anger or hate or ill will, refuses to work. That is Akartrutva Sakti. So both these Kartrutva will drop off. Once Kartrutva is dropped, Akartrutva also, Akartrutva Sakti, that, uh, that, uh, that intensity uh, I won't do, that kind of intensity, that also will drop. This is called Chitta Shodhakam. That is how the purity of the mind happens. Okay? When the mind becomes pure, when these four asaktis are gone, attachment, and along with it, aversion also will go. When kama is gone, krodha will go. When raga is gone, dvesha will go. So, then the mind becomes free, free to think, a pure mind. Then chitta shodhakam. Once that kind of a purity of the mind is accomplished. You see, how to judge the purity of the mind? The mind is uh, mostly quiet. Mostly. One. Two. When it is disturbed, it could be disturbed. We, we are all human beings after all. Nobody is a superhuman. In spite of claims. So, we do get disturbed. Some, some information is given that does disturb anybody, it does disturb. So when we are disturbed, a pure mind regains the composure very quickly. Like a honey disturbed, regains its shape very soon. That is the pure mind. Whereas bottom disturbed takes a long time to become quiet. Easily disturbed, takes long time to become quiet. That is the impure mind. A pure mind, not so easily disturbed. Even when disturbed, it becomes quiet almost immediately. That is the purity of the mind, too. Three, you don't feel frustrated. Things may not be favorable, they are favorable sometimes, sometimes not favorable. But your frustration levels are low. You will not be very frustrated. Three. Four, you are not afraid. You are not afraid. That doesn't mean you are rash or you are, uh, you are uh, very 
a full heart day. That is not what it means. You are not afraid. For fear for what? What is there to gain and what is there to lose? We are not afraid. We, we live our life. This is how and then you develop the love. The attachments are gone. There is no attachment left. Now the love starts blossoming because your Swarupa is Ananda, which is love. Therefore it will be coming in. I will uh, make a statement and you think about it. When the mind becomes pure, the, the unknown, the unknown, that is Satchidananda, Atma, the unknown, that is unknown. You don't put it into known. If it is, uh, it is the unknown, and if you say it is known, then you have denied it. It is not what it is anymore. Therefore, it is, uh, it is unknown. It is beyond the categories of known and unknown. So you should not uh, put it into the category of known, presently unknown, and therefore I make it known. No. No, wrong. It is unknown and unknowable. And it remains that way. Mind cannot reach it. But you can reach it, you know, that is not a problem. So that starts flowing into the known. The known is life. The known is life. What you think, what you speak and what you act, that is what is the known. And the known as of now is cut off from the unknown because of the impurities of the mind, because of the crudity of the mind, because of which it identifies with the physical body and the physical things. You have to identify with the physical things, then only you desire things. You identify with the physical body, then you become bhokta and karta and all that. That is the crudity of the mind which makes you disconnected from your own source. It is something like, imagine Ganga disconnected from Gomuk. What will happen to Ganga? It becomes a stagnant pool. Fortunately, it is not disconnected. You see, when there are building so many dams, there was a concern that the Ganga will lose its Aviranata. It will lose its connect to the to the original. Everywhere you put a dam, it becomes like Yamuna. In Yamuna, after Panipat, it is not Yamuna water anymore. It is some other water. <laughs> not Yamuna water anymore. That is that should not happen to Ganga. Now they may be changing, now there is a concern, the government is also doing some good work. So that, that is how it happened to this Ganga. Here is the Ganga. Shankara in Kashi Panchakam says, the consciousness is the Ganga. And this Ganga called consciousness got uh, disconnected from its source, the Satchidananda. And when the mind becomes pure, Chitta Shodha comes. Then uh, the unknown, the Atma, which is Brahman, it starts flowing into the known. Now the known is no more frustrating, frightening, it is loving. You start seeing the riches of nature all around you, the, the abundance of nature all around you. The glory of Ishvara, the one prime mover all around you. And there is a joy whenever you look around. Because the unknown is now flowing into the known. And then when you look within, you are quiet, calm, contented, not anxious, no anxiety. What happens continues to happen, the natural thing happens naturally. You are not worked up for what is going to happen. So then the life, its vitality, you start feeling. Now the vitality, there is no vitality in people. They are anxious 
and are burdened by fears and uh, desires and the ac- actions that they engender. That is how people live. Did you ever see a squirrel? Did you ever say that is what I wanted to say? Did you ever see a squirrel? It is there. One or two are there under the tree. Sometimes when it is all quiet they come down. And then move around very vitally with a lot of vitality and pick up a nut here or not there. And then uh, uh, the vitality of a squirrel uh, is worth, worth watching. There is our life. That is one extreme. Another extreme. Life is a drudgery. You carry the yoke, burdened by the fears and anxieties and worries, concerns. What will happen next? We are in a very unsafe condition, when we shall be to the safety, which God will save us, which Guru will save us. So very unhappy people. So that is the difference between an impure mind and a pure mind. That is the difference between connect and disconnect with the soul. Therefore, chitta shodha come, the mind becomes pure. When the mind becomes pure, Mukti sadhakam. That is enough. You need not accomplish um, mukti, liberation or freedom. It is always there. It is only the purity of the mind that is missing. Once the mind is pure, mukti is a foregone, it is a given fact. You see, <laughs> what is uh, liberation? What is the freedom? It is, uh, the individual is there, the individual, burdened with the false and self-imposed ideas. Nobody imposes upon you. Some gurus do that. They impose false ideas. Only with your permission. You allow, then only they can impose false ideas. Without you allowing, nobody can impose a false idea. Therefore, these false ideas and self-imposed false ideas, which are the very source of uh, desire and fear, anxiety, etc. So that is, you get the liberation from that. That is the liberation. Therefore, chitta shodhakam is equivalent to mukti sadhaka. Because that is the liberation. So, you see, I tell you, nechaya kratam, when you give up the lesser desire, so by renouncing the lesser desire, you reach us the supreme reality, reach us that truth which is in you. So, suppose you are pleased with the lesser, like uh, uh, so in, uh, in South India there is a craze, that is, everything is religion. Everything is mixed with religion, you know, in India. So the religion is the ministry and the religious religion is, uh, uh, is uh, dominated by superstition. And who is responsible? The gurus and the acharyas and the heads of the mats and pithas, etc. The religious heads, they are responsible. Because they have put a wrong message, misinformation, deeper into the society. They have put the misinformation so deep that anybody uh, uh, trying to talk against it becomes a, a controversial figure. You cannot now talk about anything uh, because the mis- wrong message has gone so deep and you say something which doesn't fit into that message, you are, uh, you are now a, a bad apple. And therefore, you have to be ostracized. It goes like that. So, who cares for uh, the passion? The one uh, who, who, who cares for the patronage? Who wants the patronage? So, anyway, therefore, uh, the superstition. In South India, there, there is a, a Trutiya, third day of the lunar month. 
Now you should update your months and all that. Because uh, these months, etc., I don't know whether they were based on a static universe, earth is flat, everything going around the earth. Is that based on that model? If it is based on that model, either partially or completely, then you you think, stop thinking and update a part. You, also, you update it. That model is no more valid. What kind of model it is? Earth is flat. Earth universe is static. Earth is flat. And the sun and moon going around the earth. Am I aware of you? You should be thrown into Bay of Bengal. <laughs> What kind of model it is? And then for a third day, and the third day comes, and on that third day, you should get gold to your home. <laughs> now, who is advertising this? Can you believe it? Who is advertising this? The jewelry fellows are advertising this on TV channels. They are advertising. There are 24 7 channels dedicated to religion, and these channels are the single largest source of superstition all through the day. Not one wise uh, teaching comes in those channels. There will be some of the exceptions here and there. And therefore, they, are, they advertise on those channels, the religious channels, they advertise. Are you ready? The third day is coming. Have you starts one month before? <laughs> Become ready. You have to purchase gold and bring it home. This is how our desires are lesser desires. Lesser desires. Huh? And therefore, when the mind is uh, so pleased with the lesser, you cannot have the highest. Therefore, chitta shodha comes. They have to purify the mind. Once the mind is pure, the lesser desires are thrown out of the window. You are already with the highest. You need not accomplish it. So, I tell you, just look at yourself. Whatever pleases you, the pleasing, you know. Pleasing means it is, uh, it, it is very transient and it is very sens sensational in nature. Pleasure, that feeling of pleasure is very superficial. It is a sensation. So like uh, uh, this dress pleases me. Means that particular when you wear it, you feel very good. You put a particular uh, ornament on your body and you feel good. Please. This kind of, uh, depending upon the outer things for, a, for that sensation of pleasure. Pleasure is a sensation. So you depend upon the outer things. Sometimes relations also. So when my wife is uh, roaming around, he, she is walking around, I feel very comfortable. <laughs> just that will be all. The feeling of the sensation will be. It's not my husband, whatever. So this is how you develop. And uh, um, so uh, the, all relations are based on acquiring this uh, sensation of pleasure. Now, now I am having given the, given a little build up. Now, now I am making a statement. Whatever pleases you, holds you back. It just holds you back. Like food also. I will stay there because there we get good food. Here the uh, classes are good but food is not so good. But <laughs> <laughs> so something like that. Whatever pleases you, holds you back. You will not make any progress towards the truth. So you, have, you look at your mind and look at yourself. Are you getting a habituated or getting this, uh, the pleasure out of these sensations? Sensations. Like a, a cut of four or five roses and put there. Good. You are a, a victim of sensations. And you are doing himsa. 
you should not do that. Then it doesn't stop there. Then uh, you get uh, allergic because the pollen is there, and so you get allergic. And therefore you have to take Allegra tablet, twenty-four hours one tablet. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Is samsara? <laughs> so it is like that. Therefore, whatever, therefore the general rule is whatever pleases you, keeps you back. We don't want any pleasant sensations. We don't want. You know why? I am Atma, which is Brahmananda. Why do you need pleasant sensations? Keeping pleasant sensations is a huge problem. So let us have, uh, let, let us uh, watch uh, something. It will be pleasant. Okay, we are human beings after all. So watch some program and uh, you feel good about it. It's okay, all right. But it becomes a habit, and uh, then uh, it becomes a problem. <coughs> you see, I tell you to chapter Shavasaka. You have to discover the unsatisfactoriness of all this, this world of things, of relations, and of events. You are psychologically dependent upon things to give you pleasant sensations, same way dependent upon relations to give you pleasant feelings and sensa- pleasant sensation only. And then you are dependent upon events for the giving pleasant sensations. So as long as this psychological dependence continues, and thereby you work for that kind of uh, sensations, your work, karma is uh, driven by that, so long your mind remains impure. And uh, so, so therefore a, a transformation happens. Chitta Shodha. Then uh, the asakti is gone, fourfold asakti is gone. In that, uh, under, in that uh, examination, you examine your relationship with the world. You know what is wisdom, knowledge? Knowledge is some, some exotic things which Guru has it and he will put it into your head with that knowledge. You know what is knowledge? Knowledge is you examine your psychological dependence upon a relation. You examine the relation. Because life is a relation. There is no life without relations. Suppose living in uh, Delhi, uh, full of relations around, you give up all that and come to Rishikesh and take to a life of sannyas. Here you will have a new set of relations. There is no life without relation. And the, the relation relating is the world. So you relate with the physical object, like I relate with this. I relate with the book, I relate with the students, I relate with the class. Then uh, we get married a young man, says my wife, that is a relation. Then your relationship with the objects of the world. There are objects with which you are relating. And then there are people with whom you are relating. You develop a relationship, wife, son, daughter, etc. And then there are events. They are, they are favorable, unfavorable, etc. Like that you are relation, relating and you understand that relationship. Take one example, gold. See how you are relating to gold. What is the relationship between you and the gold? Gold makes me pleasant. So you are psychologically dependent upon gold. You understand that. In understanding that you think about it, you watch it. Watch the dependence, examine the relationship. You have to do it. The Guru cannot do it for you. You have to do it. The Guru has to do it also, how he is relating. So you do it. Then in that examination you will realize that uh, there is psychological dependence. And you watch the dependence. In that realization, in that watching, the dependence will snap. You become free. That doesn't mean something will happen outside. Nothing will happen. Things remain in their place. Just because you stop being attached to gold, what will happen to gold? 
Nothing will happen. Gold market will continue its way. Today the stock has fallen to the bottom. So what are we going to do? <laughs> Therefore, so you have to realize in relating with the world there is no emancipation. The relationship in the which develops a psychological dependence, there is no freedom. This unsatisfactoriness of it all, this is Jagat Mithya. That is the meaning of Mithya. So you realize the unsatisfactoriness of it all. Everything is unsatisfactory, then it is transient. Transiency you have to realize. Transient. Every relation is transient. You own some money, that relation is transient. I am husband, she is my wife, that relation is transient. This has to be emphasized. So, you should not say, when wife and husband come to the Vedanta class, I feel very good about it. They think that it is wonderful. Wife and husband should do meditation together. So, we are emphasizing on the wrong thing. Because the person, human being, is essentially simple and single. That is the truth of the human being. Simple and single. That is, that is, this is a Vedanta class. This is not a marriage the council. <laughs> <laughs> so, therefore, you discover the unsatisfactoriness of it all the transiency and limitation of it all. There is always limitation of it all. And then withdraw your energies from all that. Withdraw your energies from all that. Leave things in their place. Collect all those energies which are dissipated among the many things and uh, relations of the world. Collect all those energies in one great longing for the freedom, for liberation, when you have that level of purity of the mind, the liberation will come and embrace you. Mukti sadhak. So you have to think about these things. Nechaya karta mukti sadhak. We'll say the verse one time. I will see whether I have to discuss some more of it. I will go to the next verse. Ishwarapitam nechaya kritam Chitta shodhakam mukti sadhakam Om Purnamadakam